Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Several old manuscripts of the Quran have been published recently by an organization in Turkey. We look in particular at the Chubingan manuscript. With me is Dr. Shabir Ali from the Islamic Information Center. But Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. A pleasure to be on. Now let's talk about this manuscript. Uh, what do you think is so significant about this manuscript? Yeah, first of all, uh, something about the, um, the history of the manuscript. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a manuscript of the Quran that uh, apparently uh, was in Syria uh, before uh, some German diplomats uh, took it uh, with them to uh, Germany, and now it resides in the U University of Tübingen uh, Library. Uh, and um, uh, there um, it has been studied, and now it is shown that this uh, uh, manuscript is uh, very old. It has been carved and dated by university authorities themselves uh, and found with a 95.4% accuracy to come from the period of uh, 649 to 675 of our common era, uh, CE. And, and what that means, Sophia, is that uh, it was written uh, very close to the time of our Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is this the earliest manuscript that we have? Uh, it, it is not the earliest. Uh, the Sana'a manuscript is the earliest. The, the Birmingham manuscript is also very old, older than this one, uh, given its carbon dating. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we can discuss each of those in, in turn. Uh, but for the moment, uh, this one uh, should be appreciated uh, for its uh, age and, and also uh, for uh, its, uh, its conformity with uh, what Muslims are reciting of the Quran uh, to this day. So as for the age, I started by saying that this was close to the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, uh, on whom be peace. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is said to have passed away in the year 632 of the Common Era. So 649 is just uh, within a couple of decades uh, of his demise, and 675 is a few more decades. But within that period, uh, many of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, were still alive. And, and so uh, we have here a document which not only conforms uh, with uh, what Muslims are, are reading today, uh, but uh, is also from the uh, lifetime of the people who walked with and heard the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, preach directly. So they knew what the Quran was. And uh, we, we have a stunning confirmation here uh, of uh, the accuracy and uh, authentic preservation of the Quranic text. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Shabir, there's, there's been some debate within academia about when the Quran was written, right? When it was preserved the way that we know it now. And uh, some academics have said, you know, it, it's happened quite a long time after the Prophet Muhammad's death. Um, but this seems like it's telling us a, a different story, right? This manuscript is telling us a different story. Yes, yes. As uh, Francois de Roche uh, wrote in his book, uh, The Qurans of the Umayyads, uh, the discovery of uh, the manuscript, uh, uh, which is in Paris, uh, which dates from about the same time as this one from Tübingen, and I'll hold it up so our viewers can see this uh, mushaf and how it uh, looks like. Um, so, so this is the published form in a nice uh, leather binding, and uh, it's only one quarter of, uh, of the Quran. So the editor who worked on this, uh, Dr. Al Tikulac, uh, uh, surmises that uh, uh, perhaps this was uh, uh, one fourth of the Quran. You know how we have the Quran published in in thirty parts, so that we can read one part per day and complete the Quran in one month. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this may have been like a four part collection. Uh, so uh, and this is one of the parts that that uh, survived the one quarter of the, of the Quran. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the the codex um, from Paris uh, and this one are from about the same time. And uh, Francois uh, de Roche uh, um, says in his book that the discovery of these uh, old manuscripts uh, throws out now that uh, uh, hyper-skepticism, uh, which was uh, promoted by John Wansbro and some other uh, European and Orientalist scholars uh, who had uh, thought that the Quran must have been written a couple of hundred years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon upon him. Now mm -hmm. we have confirmation that the Quran existed uh, within uh, the lifetime of the companions of the Prophet. So this is a major game changer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jabir, can you tell me a little bit about the script that was uh, that is in the Quran? What kind of script is being used? 
Yeah, so naturally it's written in Arabic and uh, the, the script that is used here is uh, a very older uh, form of, of the Arabic script. I'll just hold it up a little bit closer so that viewers may get a visual impression. Um, okay. So, uh, is it the, called the if, Kufic if, if, script? Is that, is that the name? Uh, the, yeah, this, this older form is called the Kufic. This one is called uh, the Hijazi script. And okay. the Kufic script is, is thought to come from a century uh, later. Okay. So, so this one, this earlier form of the script uh, requires some, some uh, basic training to, to read it. It's almost like if you were driving automatic for a long time and, uh, and, you, and you never drove manual, uh, <laughs> then now you need a little bit of training to drive manual. Um, so, but, but basically the, the, the way of driving and so on is all uh, basically the same. So uh, with a little bit of retraining, uh, one can read this uh, text uh, as well, especially where it is uh, clear. Sometimes the text gets faded uh, with the passage of time, uh, but it requires a careful scholar to go through it in great detail. And what uh, Alti Kulach from the uh, research uh, firm IRCICA has done uh, is that uh, he has actually gone through it and he has transcribed into um, uh, modern uh, fonts uh, mm -hmm. the, what, is, what he finds written there in the, um, in, in the uh, classical uh, writing, and we can see that uh, first of all, we can compare his transcription with the original page, uh, which is given, and we can see that his transcription is accurate. And secondly, in reading the transcription, which is easier to read uh, quicker, uh, one can see that this corresponds to what we are re reciting uh, as the Quran to to this day. Mm -hmm. so, I assume at that time it was written without any dots, right? Yes, it was written without dots. Now, this manuscript does have some dots, but the dots are thought to have been uh, included later and also with a different color ink. But uh, mm -hmm. just looking at the basic skeleton text uh, of, the, of the Quran, which trained readers are, are, are trained to recite even without the dots. So this becomes like an aid memoir, uh, a memory aid, uh, as the scholars refer to them. Uh, then... Um, uh, this uh uh, and th this here is at least the confirmation that the basic skeleton text of the Quran as we have it now is uh, from that ancient time. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zibir, can you tell me a little bit about the testing that was done on, the, on this manuscript to make sure that it was actually uh, written in the time that it said it was written in? Being written? Yeah. So, in fact, uh, the uh, Chubingan University submitted the uh, uh, pieces of this uh, manuscript to be tested using carbon-14 methods uh, in a reputable labor laboratory, and uh, the testing came back to show that this was from the period of 649 to 675 with a 95.4% per accuracy. Now, the, the reason they, they speak in terms of these statistics is that uh, the test itself is statistical. Uh, they run the tests a number of times and the results come back and then they say 95.4% uh, of the results fall within this uh, time period. So mm -hmm. that's a very uh, dependable um, test by itself. I mean, that's a very dependable result by itself. But carbon-14 tests with such ancient uh, parchments themselves have been uh, called into question uh, from two perspectives. One is that uh, the carbon-14 tells you uh, when the animal whose skin was used uh, to to produce the document actually died. It doesn't tell you when the document was actually produced. But mm -hmm. uh, we can say that uh, you know these things were not kept in stock. Uh, animals were slaughtered and immediately their hides were, were prepared uh, for uh, the transcription. It's not like you had a whole stock of uh, animal hides waiting for somebody to come and buy them to, to write a document. Uh, the second uh, aspect of this is that sometimes it has been found that the carbon-14 testing did not prove uh, reliable uh, in, in giving us results for some ancient manuscripts. But with those cautions aside, uh, I, I mean, with those cautions not to be uh, treated lightly, but at least on the surface, we have no reason to dispute the present uh, carbon-14 result uh, that was obtained by Chubing and University. This is like a university that has nothing to do with Muslims per se. It is a recognized academic institution, and uh, this uh, is the date that they give for this document, uh, given 
from an independent uh, uh, laboratory. Uh, so Muslims uh, have every reason to celebrate this result uh, as one that uh, confirms uh, the, uh, the ancient nature of this manuscript. And we can see visually uh, that this uh, is in conformity with what we're reciting today. And the result, therefore, uh, is the conclusion that the Quran that Muslims are reciting today go all the way back, at least in its skeleton text, uh, the consonantal form, uh, to the time of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and therefore uh, it's a very reliable document. I'm really excited that you could share that with us, Dr. Shabir. Thank you. You're welcome.